Welcome back! Today we're reacting to some more Kurz Gazog. This one's just dropped. I'm really excited to watch it. Your body killed cancer five minutes ago. Let's just dive right in. Somewhere in your body, your immune system just quietly killed one of your own cells, stopping it from becoming cancer mm -hmm. and saving your life. Our body is amazing at detecting problems. There's so many problems that your body automatically takes care of without you ever knowing. It's amazing. It does that all the time. The vast majority of cancer cells you develop will be killed without you ever noticing, mm -hmm. which is an incredibly hard job because of what cancer cells are. Parts of yourself that start to behave as individuals, even if it hurts you. Yep. What is cancer and how does your body kill it all the time? Cancer is an absolutely horrible thing. It really is. It, it truly is. The pain that it causes people and the devastation that it can wreak on families. It is an absolutely horrible thing. And we talk all the time about finding the cure to cancer, but I don't think people realize that cancer is not something as simple as that. It is very complex, it's very dynamic, and it's very individualized. So one case of cancer, even if it's the same type, does not mean that it's the same as someone else's cancer. They're very different. It's a unique and individualized mutation. Now, there are some theories that maybe things like CRISPR, which we just watched a video about, things of that nature might be able to target cancer more dynamically. Uh, and there's a bunch of other things, not just CRISPR. But stuff like that might be possible. Or it might be possible to boost our bodies to get a little better specifically at targeting an individualized cancer situation. But it is a very dynamic thing, and finding a cure for it as a whole, well, that's probably just not feasible. It's something we have to tackle on an individual basis. Now, discovering and perfecting the tools to help cure it as a whole, that's where we need to focus, and that's where there's a lot of promising work coming up. Cancer is when corrupted cells multiply uncontrollably. It can emerge from basically every type of cell in your body, so there's not just a single type of cancer, but hundreds. Some grow slowly, others are aggressive, some can be treated effectively, others are deadly. Very individualized. In a, sense, a cell that becomes cancer turns into something ancient and something new. Over billions of years, evolution has molded cells to survive and thrive in a hostile environment, fighting for space and resources until a new and exciting way of life emerged, cooperation, a division of labor that allowed cells to specialize and become more successful together. That's actually a really good point, is back when life first emerged, everything was single cellular. So everything had to exist independently of, it, of other cells and had to thrive and multiply. One of the definitions of life is multiplication, right? So it's actually a very interesting point that it's kind of reverting back to something that used to be normal for cells and used to be very expected of single-celled life. But cooperation requires sacrifices. For a multicellular being to stay healthy, the well-being of the collective has to matter more than the survival of the individual cell. I'm pausing a lot, I'm sorry, but we do that here. Society would be infinitely better if we could realize this on a societal level. Cancer cells stop being part of the collective and become individuals again. Your body can handle a few rogue cells, but some cancer cells divide again and again, becoming a sort of new organism within you, taking resources you need to survive, competing for the space you inhabit, destroying the organs they were part of in the process. Mm -hmm. Despite the harm they cause, cancer cells are not evil. They don't want to hurt you. They don't want anything. Cells are protein robots that just follow their programming, which unfortunately has been corrupted. And we learned that that programming can be corrupted with a single one digit of DNA. The proper digit being corrupted can cause wildly crazy things like cancer. The soul of the cell. In a nutshell, your cells have a nucleus filled with DNA. It consists of genes, instructions for how to build proteins and when to make each one. 
These building instructions are copied and transferred to ribosomes where they're used to make proteins. And honestly, the fact that these copyings, right, happen so many times a day, trillions of trillions of times per day in your body, and that as little mistakes, as few mistakes that are made are made, is absolutely a miracle. I mean, let's just be honest. The fact that we can copy that information that many times and have as few mistakes as we do, that's one of the wonders of the universe right there. Absolutely. What kind of proteins your cells make determine what they can do. The important thing here is that a corrupt gene means you get a corrupt protein, which will get important later. Your DNA gets a tiny bit corrupted. It mutates tens of thousands of times each day. Most of the time without any special cause, just by being alive. Almost all of these mutations are fixed very quickly or are not problematic. Still, over time, as your cells make copies of themselves, damage is accumulating. Imagine having to make copies from copies from copies for decades. Maybe one day a hair got on the scanner or a corner got frayed. Each new mistake becomes part of the new copies and all the copies that follow. This is actually one of the problems potentially with some of the biological immortality that's been talked about up in Harvard labs is even if we can reverse the effects of aging, so to say, if we can roll back the biological clock and we can up brain activity, we can increase metabolism, we can, you know, actually build back muscle tone, all that sort of thing. If you can do that on a physical scale, you're still not necessarily fixing the problem that they're talking about here of degradation of the material after it's been copied so many times. And that's something that I have no idea if they actually have a plan for or not, but it's a very interesting thought. You can increase DNA damage by doing things like smoking, drinking alcohol, by being obese, breathing in asbestos, by not using sunscreen, or contracting a virus like HPV. But the simplest way to damage DNA and get cancer is to be alive long enough. For many mm -hmm. cancer cases, there is no cause other than bad luck. The damage that leads to cancer. We are simplifying, but roughly there are three categories of genes that need to be corrupted so cancer can arise. The first key mutation is in the appropriately named tumor suppressor genes, or TSGs. Hmm. These genes are a bunch of things. For one, they produce control mechanisms that continuously scan your DNA for mistakes and copying errors and fix them right away. Ah. And then they keep normal cells from multiplying recklessly. So that's actually a potential thing, right? If we could focus on improving that system. If TSGs become damaged, your cells basically forget how to repair themselves and can reproduce unchecked. The second crucial mutation can happen in your oncogenes. When oncogenes are turned on, the cell is told to multiply rapidly. They were super active when you were inside your mother's womb. Ah. To turn a single original cell into trillions in months, it needs to divide and grow rapidly. Mm -hmm. These rapid growth genes are turned off when there's enough of you. When your oncogenes get corrupted, they basically turn on again. And I would imagine that the amount of change needed to activate those genes is probably quite low. The third crucial mutation is in your cell's suicide switch. Most cells are constantly recycled and refreshed. When cells amass too much damage, they usually notice, and special genes trigger a controlled suicide called apoptosis. If the genes that control this process get damaged, cells are free to live on despite being dangerously corrupted. Take one for the team, so buddy. If a cell becomes unable to fix the mistakes in its genetic code, loses the ability to destroy itself when it notices the damage, and begins to grow rapidly without restraint, it turns into a young cancer cell. These cells have to be killed as quickly as possible. While they are bad at this stage, they are still pretty weak and easy to kill. But if they continue to mutate and increase in number, they can learn to avoid your defenses and become a real threat. At any moment of your life, your immune system is hunting these cells. But how do you identify and kill corrupted cells that seem indistinguishable from healthy ones? It's a good question. How to find cancer? Well, here we come back to the proteins your cells produce and the story they tell. So if, for example, your oncogenes switch back on, they make oncogene proteins. 
Your immune system Makes knows sense. they should not be present if you're an adult. So to know which... How? How does our immune system know that? I would be quite curious to learn more about that. So how does it actually know it's okay at this stage of your life, but later down the road it's not okay? There must be a switch somewhere or something that's triggered at some point that indicates that, right? So how is that handled? Cells are corrupt and which are healthy, your immune system needs to know what proteins they're making inside. To solve this, evolution came up with MHC class 1 molecules, a sort of display window that makes cells transparent. Huh. Cells constantly take little samples of the proteins they make and put them into thousands of these MHC molecules to showcase what they're doing. Oh, the selection that's useful. is constantly refreshed, always giving an up-to-date picture. There's a whole library of proteins that are highly dangerous and should not be made by healthy cells, and your immune system has them all on file. Hmm. It has billions of specialized cells called T-cells made to recognize specific proteins. I guess that there's a reason, a very good reason, why the human immunosystem is the second most complicated system on the planet. Only second to the human brain. If a T-cell sees a forbidden protein in an MHC display window, it knows that the cell is corrupted and kills it immediately. But there's a flaw in this system. What if a cancer cell mutates and finds a way to circumvent this process? All it needs to do is to stop making MHC class 1 molecules and boom, it's invisible. Without display windows, the immune system is blind and can't identify cancer anymore. Huh. Fortunately, evolution found an ingenious solution. The natural killer cell. A judge, jury, and executioner. The <laughs> killer. At this very second, hundreds of millions of natural killer cells are patrolling your body, looking for cells that have already turned into cancer or are corrupted by a virus. Natural killer cells go from cell to cell to check for one thing. Does a cell have MHC class 1 molecules? Does it have a display window? And is it doing its duty of showing off what's going on inside itself? This is so amazing because it covers all of your bases. Huh. While T cells look for the presence of the unexpected, something that should not be here, natural killer cells look for the absence of the expected, the absence of something that should be here. It's amazing. The logic is, if a cell does not have display windows, it wants to hide something. And a cell that hides something must be killed. What makes the natural killer cell even more metal is that it's always in murder mode. It patrols your body, checking cell after cell with the intention of killing it. Your healthy cells have to convince it that they should not die today. And a way to do that is to have MHC class 1 molecules. Could be potentially really dangerous if your natural killer cells got their instructions messed up, right? And they started killing things that had these class 1 cells. I wonder if that's a thing that can actually happen or not. So, in summary, almost all young cancer cells you will ever develop in your life will be killed by your immune system. Okay, but if your body is this prepared, why do we still get cancer? Well, sometimes cancer cells mutate more and get much better at fighting back. Cancer is a story of an arms race. An arms race that we will win eventually, maybe with the help of natural killer cells. Right now, a number of therapies are beginning to show amazing promise from cancer-fighting vaccines to engineered T-cells and even natural killer cells. We'll look at these therapies in future videos. So the war is not won yet, but we are on to cancer and eventually it will be eliminated once and for all. Maybe sooner than we think. I would be willing to bet that within my generation's lifetime, we are, we get to a point that cancer can be, now the, the key word is can, because corporate greed is still a thing, unfortunately, but that we can be to a point where cancer is almost entirely addressable. I do think very heavily that it's going to boil down to individualized treatment if we want to have the widest effect, but other systems that target those improving the already existing systems within our bodies, those are great too. This video was made possible in part by direct viewer support and in part through a grant by Gates Ventures. Thanks, Gates Ventures. I really like this video. Um, as always, I mean, I say this every Kurzgesagt video, 
I think, but they never disappoint ever. <laughs> Their content's always great. It's always engaging. I learned a lot in this video. Cancer is one of those absolutely horrible things that just causes an unnecessary amount of pain and suffering, not only for the people that have it, but for the people close to those people. And I think that it's wonderful that there's a lot of people dedicating a lot of their time and resources into fighting cancer and trying to figure out how we can get better at dispatching it. So I'm really excited to see where this goes over the course of our lifetimes. I really do think that within our lifetimes that we will see it normalized that cancer is significantly less deadly. Instead of having cancer be a, a higher percentage of people uh, passing from it, I think that we'll get to a point where it's actually a rare occurrence. I think there will be an awkward transition phase in there somewhere where once again corporate greed takes over and it will be unnecessarily expensive uh, to the point where a lot of people can't afford it, but the companies make their money. And I think after a short amount of time that that will be fixed, either by force of the government or by just going to other countries because the healthcare system in the U.S. sucks. And maybe the U.S. isn't the one who, who comes up with that solution. Maybe it's somewhere else in the world, too. And it makes its way here, which would still not eliminate our crappy healthcare system, but at least eliminate a little bit of those problems. Anyway, thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. I really appreciate it. If you made it all the way to the end with me, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button so you can see more. Uh, I love interacting with you guys. I love doing this. It's really great. So thank you so much and have yourself a wonderful day.